this is gonna be the part recorded all right awesome so i was just saying i wanted to share five things that i got this week someone sent me a picture on twitter about five key successful trading pretty interesting because it's something that we think about some things that i've talked about a lot but that are not always we don't always use them and we don't like it's it's easy to fall off track and to not think about those things so i want to share those five keys here first one is you have to make peace with your losses you make peace with your losses that means if you have a loss it, it doesn't matter it's part of the process part of trading so make peace with your losses and don't think about them at all like they happen they're gone that's it that's past forget about it for the rest of the time second key is don't look at what others think and that's a big one right don't look at what other people are thinking thinking about your return about yourself because you're trading and i've seen this a lot like people who start to trade they start to trade full like they they, they want to trade full time and the more they trade the more people are kind of looking at them weird like what is this, what is this guy doing right? he's trading what, what like what the fuck is that but you need to stop thinking about those people you need to just get away and just focus on yourself right because there's always be going there's always going to be someone putting you down or changing the way things should be and if you're going to stay affected by them well you in for a really rough ride so it's going to be really tough i'll just go back here on facebook see if i have any one nice john what's up nice john's joining us live i love it love it finally yeah we're making it live finally on facebook love it took some practice and failure to uh figure out what facebook live worked and what did like what didn't work at all so second key as i said uh, don't look at what others think. That's a big one. Next one, third key. Don't compare yourself to others. And I've talked about that so much. And I wrote an article on the Offington Post. I'll try to put the link on either here or somewhere somewhere else. But don't compare yourself to other people. Why? Because we're 8 billion people on this planet right now. And there's always going to be someone with more. Always going to be someone with less. You're always going to be in the middle. Okay, that's for sure. So if you start to compare yourself to other people, you'll always be disappointed. Okay, you cannot just try to compare yourself to other people and focus on being like you have to focus on being the best. But if you start to compare yourself to other people, you'll always be stuck somewhere and you'll always be like mad or disappointed because of the fact that other people are other people are are are, are there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let me go on this video and post the link right now. About not comparing yourself to people. And that post has been quite popular. I was just looking at the uh, the likes and the share. For 100 shares, that's pretty cool. Love it. I'll put the link there. Right here. There you go. If you guys want to see the link to the article, go on the Facebook page. Uh, uh, just type in this to trade it's where the video is posted and you'll see the link right below you can check it out and if you're watching this on YouTube after I'll put the link as well the third key don't, don't compare yourself uh, fourth key the only person in charge you're trading is yourself I cannot make you a successful trader although I would like and I, I would love to but you're the only one who's going to take the action you're the only one who's going to review you're the only one who's going to test you're the only one who's gonna watch the chart and pay attention. I cannot do all, all those things. I can show you how, but you're gonna have to do the work after that. You're gonna have to put in the work. Yes, so you're the only one person in charge of your trading. If you get a bad week, a bad month, it's all on you. It's all your job. You need to do, you, you're gonna be able to get out of it for sure. You know how to do it, but you're the only one who can do something about it. You're the only one who can work your way out of this and become successful. Like you can rely on a lot of webinars, a lot of events, all that stuff. That's great. But you need to put in the work after those events because you're the only one in charge. That's the fourth key. And fifth key. <laughs> I love this one. Stop thinking. And then this, I have my part. Stop thinking and researching so much. Yeah, there's going like, there's tons of information out there. There's tons of ways to analyze the market. Tons of ways to look at at the data, look at the stats, look at like anything you want, but you need to stop researching on everything. Focus on one or two. Focus on having only one or two things you follow 
and just follow them closely, right? Because you can easily be distracted. You can so easily fall into the trap of looking for everything, going to every webinar, going to every event, reading every single book on trading, or just like listening to every interview. And that's fine. Like there's like that helps, but you need to put a stop. You need to put a stop at thinking about, about trading a little bit. It's good to want to be a trader. It's good to want to pay attention to stuff, but at some point you need to make like a stop and stop for a while. Stop thinking when you're not, when you're not trading, stop thinking about your trades. When you're doing something else, be present. And that works for trading. Be present in trading, be present where you're somewhere else. And I heard a quote, uh, a couple of, like, a couple of times. It says, wherever you are, like be there. That's it. Wherever you are, be there. And that's a big key. If you're going to be at work, be at work. If you're going to be trading, trade. If you're going to be with your family, be, be with your family. But don't try to be every, everywhere. And don't try to think about like other things when you're not at the right place. Okay, that's a big, big key here that I want to share. So those were the five keys. I'll try to recap uh, all in my notebook. I've known them down. It's pretty long. But uh, take, take those in, in note, guys. And I'll put the, the, the picture on Facebook somewhere. So you guys are going to be able to look at it. But first key, make peace with your losses. Second one, don't look at what others think. Third one, don't compare yourself to other people. Fourth one, the only person in charge is yourself. Fifth one, stop thinking and researching so much. If you can just follow these five things, I believe you're going to make a big difference in trading. I believe this can really, really help. And I know I said them pretty quick. Maybe you guys will have to uh, go back and re-listen to this video. Totally fine. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's part of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> John's really excited about that. Yeah, I love it. Cool. Now, the next thing I wanted to do uh, today is, well, if, if you guys have any questions, post them below. But I'm super excited. I have a lot of stuff to show. So I'll, I'll go ahead and show this. Uh, give me a second so I can go in trading view. I want to open my chart and show you a losing trade I had on Friday. That was painful. And this is a discussion we had in the academy. Uh, I had that with, uh, with, uh, his name? with Brian. So we talked about stop losses, how not to be stopped out too often. And I made that exact mistake on Friday. So I want to show you how I made the mistake first and how I could have done things differently. Okay, so I'll put this here. I'll uh, switch this. And you guys will have to let me know if I if screen. Okay, I'll just wait here because I, I just want to make sure you guys see the screen. Wonderful. Yeah, you guys see the screen. So I'll go to trading view now. In case you guys don't see the chart, let me know. But I think you should see it. I'm pretty sure you should see it. And this is a trade I took on USDJPY. Now people scream often and say, I don't share my bad trade. I don't share like like the, the mistake that I, I, I do. But I share them, okay? I share every single one of them. So I want to make sure you guys learn from them. And I'm really, really like open with this. I don't care at all if you guys are gonna like laugh of my mistake. That's fine. I don't care because I don't, I don't violate my results on other people. But if I share this, it's really to help you guys, and hopefully you can take a lesson from this. And I'm taking lessons as well. So I'm gonna as well like take something out of it, and it's gonna be useful for me to share them. So here's the the trade. Okay, I was on USDJPY and go on a daily chart. Uh, okay, so it's something I always teach in my academy. First question to ask yourself is what is the market phase? Now we've been going at this. We've been going sideways on USDGPY. So what does that mean? It means if I'm going to go on lower time frame, I'm able to trade whatever type of trade. Okay, it could be long or short. It doesn't matter. We don't have any strong trend. Okay, so I'm going to go on a forward chart. And what I've been noticing that we had this draw, sorry for the drawing here. I'll draw what we had. So we had this kind of range, okay? Range here and range here below. Now, what we've had is that we broke outside of the range. Okay. I'm, I'm on the one hour chart now. 
been on the one hour chart and we've we've broke us on the range here okay but then somewhere i started to see this candlestick right here okay and i set up for me because we created a new range this is again a new range. okay and this is the type of trade i like to think we're in a range so i can use the bollinger band here i see this bearish shingle okay which is a bollinger band reversal trade which I just love those trades. So I'm gonna put the entry below. We just hit the entry, I was pretty happy. Stop loss above. Okay, two to one if you wait to risk or more. And usually I'm gonna wait to see when the trend stops. Okay, I'm pretty open with this, pretty, pretty flexible. And then I see, well, this. Okay, so first candlestick has some profit, then more profit, then we go back up. Stop loss was above the high. What happened is that right at this candlestick here, which is a, which made a nice spin bar, stop loss has been hit. Now the question is why? Why did the stop loss got hit? Well, we've had a push, had this, we came back down. And the idea here is that all the traders that are gonna take that single, which I took, it's a very single thing candle, so a lot of people take that. They're all gonna put their stop loss right above the high. Okay, I put mine a little bit higher, but not high enough. Now guess what happens? A okay, big, big, big move down. The next candlestick. And the point of this trade is that whenever you're gonna put your stop loss, you have to always put your stop loss where most people are not gonna put it. Okay, because it's so easy and that's gonna happen over and over again where you'll have a good setup, you'll put your stop loss right above the candlestick, and it's gonna get hit, and then price is gonna go in your direction straight away. It's, you wanna be really, really careful with this. And like, it's easy to say in retrospect, but my ideal stop loss, what I would have done is I would have looked at the forward chart to get an idea. And since we don't have any highs recently, okay, what I would have done is I would have put the stop loss just like maybe here, okay, just to be outside of this whole thing. And it doesn't matter if the reward to risk is a little bit bad, okay, it's not a problem, but at least you get stopped out way less often. And it's gonna be way less frustrating to be, like, to be stopped out for a reason. So that's what I would do here. So I'm sure, like comment below guys, if you had this experience before, where you put your stop loss and you get hit right away. And price coming back in your direction. Like, just let me know. I'm sure it's happened a couple of times to you as well. But that's uh, that's uh, a quick uh, overview of that thing. You want to be really careful. And the more evident your stop loss is, so if everyone's gonna put their stop loss here, it's almost sure that your stop loss is gonna get hit. Okay, unless we go like straight down in the in the direction, but oftentimes it's gonna it's gonna happen. Now there's another way that you can deal with those things. Now I'll just look at the comment real quick here. Do I have some comment? Here we go. So let me out. Yeah. So the other way you could deal with this, and I know people doing this, I don't do it really often because I, I, I think it's just complicated to, to do it. But if you're gonna put your stop loss right above, okay, stop loss above here, uh, what you can do is you can wait. You can just like buy your first half of your position here, as I did, put your stop loss right above. And then when price goes in, the, in your direction strongly or comes back to retest, then you add your position. So you add your second half. Okay, that's one way you could do it. You take one half here, one half, let's say after the pin bar, and then you're, you have a pretty good price. But the point is you didn't put all your position here and you're not, well, you might be stopped out in the first half, but the second half you'll have it and you're gonna have still a good, good trade. Yes, okay, so that's one way you could do it. Or the other way is you can like enter your first position here, like I did. And second position, second half of the position when you break the, the range here. Because don't, don't forget we have a range. Okay, we have a nice range. If you're gonna enter on the breakout, that's the other way to do it. 
And this is really, I this is highly valuable because we have an engulfing candle. And I'll, I think I'll have to remove a few few things here. Getting a little bit distracting. Okay, so what I want to say is that we had this range. Okay, nice range. Sorry about that. The range. Great. And we have here an engulfing candle. And we have an enduring open candle right here. I know that if we're gonna break above one of those candles, can, above one of those uh, engulfing candle, price is probably gonna go strongly in the direction. Here it didn't work, so a nice reversal sign. But here, this is a strong, strong buy uh, single. If we're gonna break below the candlestick, that means here, chances are we're gonna go down strongly. And what happened is we went down. We broke here, and then I'm pretty sure that price went straight up to the downside. Yeah, I'll take a look at a lower time frame. Yeah, so once we get like through here, we like probably go strongly to the downside because of the fact that a lot of people bought on this engulfing candle, okay, this bullish candle, a lot of people bought here. They put the stop loss below the low and they're gonna get stopped out. Okay, and once people get stopped out, well, like things happen and you're gonna have a strong move in price. Yes, that's really a clear sign here. I hope this is clear for you guys. I did have another good trade I could show you. But if you guys have any questions, type them uh Facebook and I'll just try to see how many people are there. Yeah, what happened a huge profit for sure. Yeah, for sure. What happened a huge profit, but that's the thing that got the the type of thing you have to learn. Right, you have to learn those things because it's like the thing you want to do. And I know that I like have a note now in my journal with this, but I've learned something here. And next time, a stop loss is not going to be above the candlestick. You can be sure of that. Stop loss is going to be way above, okay? Because I want to make sure I protect myself. And having many trades like this can really make you with the, like if you can have a good strategy. You can really become unprofitable with only these trades. If you're gonna have like four or five of them often, well, you're gonna probably see a big decrease in your return. You wanna be really careful with that. And now I'll show you, uh, maybe I can show you another trade that I took. I have a trade on the AD and ADUSD. Uh, this is pretty much an easy trade for you guys. So this trade was a really good opportunity because and I, I, th I think I did a video on this. I had a first trade entered here on a Bunger Band breakout while Bunger Band reversal again. And uh, I'll put Bunger Band here. First trade entered here. The take profit was like at two to one somewhere. Now, the cool thing with this is that we had, new we had a news announcement on uh, I think that was Tuesday evening uh, for the Austral the Australian dollar. And once after we had the news announcement, I had another nice setup on that pair. Price went back up to the resistance level, and we had another Bollinger Band reversal setup. So I ended up entering a second position here, above, above, and that one is in good profit right now. Okay, that one is almost at two to one. And even uh, depending on the entry, it could be two to one. But the point is that I re-entered on that pair. And that's another thing. You need to know when to be able to re-enter on a setup. Okay, if you have good opportunities like this, where like the two setups are good, you can re-enter. Like there's no problem with this. Okay. And that gives me a better entry. And I know it's according to my plan. So I know right here that I have a good sign of a, a good trade. Okay. I'm not gonna add because price goes here for the reason and stays here. I'll add because I know price is likely to reverse again. Okay, so that's a really good point here that you can remember, thing you can do. And you guys can, can let me know if you do those things in the comment, if you add to your position. If not, totally fine, but it's something you can do if you know how to do it, okay? So I wanna make this clear that uh, you can get some bigger profit if you do this and that a lot of successful traders, what they're going to do is they're going to add as the trend goes to their position. 
they're going to break even on the first position possible and they're going to add to the position okay so they can they could start with the risk of one percent but they'll, they'll end up with a return of like 10 percent because they've been adding consistently to the position so that's a key point here but you need to know when to do it and it's totally fine if you don't do it at first okay i'll just switch this here funny if you don't do it at first but the, the, the more you progress the more you want to try to do it because at least you're going to get something better so it needs practice of course but over time you'll have to have to be able to practice that and uh yeah careful with placing your stuff for sure let me go on the uh, page here if you guys have any questions type them below I don't think we have that many people live, but who knows? That happens when you do Q and A's on Saturday. People are busy, so that's that's fine. I'll just take a look at the page because I didn't see the comments. You want to apologize if I missed a few comments? Page. That's fine. Yeah, good trades for sure, but you need to like be able to experiment with good trades. If you have any questions, type them uh, somewhere. And if not, I'll just go straight to... Yeah, no, I'll just uh, stop the Q&A pretty soon. I do have other things to do. I have to schedule the emails for the podcast. And on, Mondays we'll, on Monday, we'll have a podcast that I'm doing solo. And this one's going to focus on trading strategies. I hear so many people talk about strategies, how they have trouble having a strategy. They don't, they don't have any plan. And I'm kind of sick of that. So I want to make sure that you guys have a strategy as soon as possible. And what I do in this podcast, it's going to be like a three-part series. So we'll explore all strategies you can have. What, what, are, like what, are, what are the basics of a strategy? And then what, what strategies you can have? So what indicators you can use? Because I'm like tired of people who trade anything or they're, they're, they're going to trade moving average in a, in a sideways market if that doesn't work so i want to make sure that you guys know what works in strategies and we're going to make the job more simple for you you just have to pick one execute on that one and see the result okay so you have to do work like we said you're the only one responsible for your strategy your plan but i want to provide you as much information as i can on those okay and i don't trade anything you need to focus on those things like you pick one, you focus, what I do, but at least you have a good understanding of how things, how price moves. And my challenge is going to be to do this on an audio format. I know it's a little bit harder, but I'll make sure that uh, we have something good for, for you guys. Podcast. Yeah, no large, large power. Yeah, good. Yeah, and I don't like that quote, <laughs> to be honest. Knowledge is not power, but I would say knowledge plus, plus practice is power. Because some people are going to read books, they're going to have like shelves of whole books and everything, but they're not going to apply anything. They're never going to apply anything. Because okay, so the more knowledge you have doesn't mean you'll be good. And I know I have some like, good trading knowledge, but I know I'm not applying like all of it. For sure. Because I've lost some things over time. And the thing you want to do is you want to like increase your speed of implementation. When you learn something, you want to implement it as soon as possible. You can make it a habit. Okay. And it's fine to try new things, but those things are going to become habits. That's a really, really good part here. But that's pretty much it. I'll have the podcast on Monday. And uh, what else is coming up? Both things are Yeah. Yeah, the other thing I want to... Yeah, I'll, I'll post the picture below so that you guys uh, see it. The picture I got on Twitter. It's really, really awesome. And yeah, we'll have this. I'll have a blog post coming up on Wednesday. I'll make sure that... Uh, and I'll, I I think I'll talk about my stats. Yeah, that's probably going to be the topic. So I got a couple, a couple of uh, tweets and comments this week about my, my stats. So I said I had a, a, a winning rate of like 60 to 70% most of the time. 
and people like some people got like didn't understand this some people were sure i was like a scam because of that because i said i have 60 to 70 percent win okay but the point is that i do something to have those wins okay i'm not like if i were if i were not doing the things i do now i would not have the same uh winning rate and i'll have to agree that my my uh my reward to risk it's not that awesome like it's not that huge because I have this higher win rate. You guys need to understand that you can have a low win rate and a high reward to risk, or a high reward to risk and a low win rate. Okay? Did I say the same thing twice? No, not sure. You can have, sorry, you can have a low reward to risk and a high win rate, or a high or a low win rate and a high reward to risk. Okay, so that, those are the two things you can have. And it's like, there's no, one better than the other, right? You pick what's right for you. And most of the time, people like, like people have their styles. They might like something more than the other. And that's totally fine. Okay? I don't have anything against that. So yeah, so do whatever you want and it's totally fine here. So let me see, cause I didn't see the page for this whole time. I'll just take a quick look if I have any question. If not, we'll end it here. Like we didn't have any other comment. That's that's totally fine. So we'll do one Q and A next week again. I want to make sure that uh, we do it consistently every week because I know some people have questions in the week, and it's a good to come back on Friday, ask a question. I can answer them on the spot. So I love it. We'll do this next week. If you're, well, if you're not in the Facebook group, check out the Facebook group at desiretotrade.com forward slash group. And I just said, desiretotrade.com forward slash group. Check out that Facebook group. It's free. And I want to make sure it's the best Facebook creators. We have over 800, I think 814 members there. And I really want to make sure that you guys interact, you guys ask questions there. That will provide the help that you guys need to forward in trading. Check this out. Uh, email me if you have any question, reach out. Check out the academy as well, which is growing. I love to see new people coming in. And the link is going to be all on the website, startotrade.com. And you guys are going to benefit for sure from it. So check this out, and I'll see you pretty soon. And to end the live. Ciao.